Hey, how's it going? It's your boy Adam Warrior Dials here to bring you the 10.7 Loyalo tier list. Now, I know everyone is really excited about the new fiddlesticks, but as per usual, we will not be ranking any of the new champions or reworks until initial data on them comes out. But at the very least, I can tell you he's gonna be like a top 40 jungler and at least better than his current version. I'd also like to give a shout out to our newly updated champion pages who go roll by roll and give you everything you need to get started for picks we think deserve to be highlighted. But if you fancy playing any other champions you see in our tier list, we've got you covered because Mobilytics got the best deals anywhere. I mean, wait, wrong game. We got the best build for every champion with runes, items, skill order, and even some different builds you can try on our champion pages. Link will be down below, so go check them out. Starting off in the top lane, our S tier roster will be Garen, Wukong, Nasus, Darius, Mordekaiser, and Set. You might be wondering why Garen is still S tier post nerfs, and it mostly comes down to Garen's nerfs are more intended to stop him as a mid laner, and it won't impact him as much in the top lane. As for some actual changes, we have Camille and Rengar being completely taken off the list to the Shadow Realm as not only do they no longer perform that well in low elo, but their play rates drop pretty significantly. Tree Man, Lamalkai, and Fiora are moving down from S tier to A tier because not that they really got any worse, but simply because the other S tiers are that much stronger than the rest of the crowd, so we felt they suited A plus tier a bit more as they needed to make way for the newest S tier champion, Nasus. Moving him up like that might seem a little backwards, I know, but Susan's buff might not seem that significant, but what you need to remember is that that very same range buff made him competitively viable a few seasons ago, and then when you add on that, that crazy amount of armor pen to his E, like, holy, I, I don't even know, he's just gonna destroy every single melee matchup. I mean, I'm exaggerating a little bit, let's not kid ourselves, it's still Nasus, but with so many Bork and Cinder Hulk users in this meta, and the popularity of melee supports, melee mid laners, we are 100% in a melee focused meta, where his armor shred on E will have a massive impact when he's gonna run in 1v9 and just kill everyone that's abusing Bork Bruisers. As for his setup, I'm gonna show you his most consistent build in Loilo on the screen, but before Nasus mains, hit me up in the comments with stuff like, haha, you can tell this guy doesn't even main Nasus, he doesn't even know most high level Nasus players go spellbook with ghost heal, oh shit, he actually knows. Well, the thing is about that setup is it's actually just harder to pull off using spellbook in general because you need a higher base of knowledge to use it, and it might be a little too mechanically difficult for the average Nasus player. It's a joke, it's a joke, calm down but I do agree that it is a better setup if used in plat plus brackets, so feel free to check it out on our champion pages. It's featured on that, I just put it in myself. Next up, to my own surprise, Aatrox is doing well on the low elo list, so we moved him from B tier to A tier, which might be a first for him. That's because in past iterations of AA Trox's rework, a lot of his power budget was put into his revives, which needed to be utilized properly, but now with the absurd healing amp on his alt combined with the newfound tankiness of Death's Dance, Atrox is pretty unkillable and easily able to drain tank teams even through grievous wounds. That means that despite Atrox being a high skill ceiling champion, due to his increased tankiness, he doesn't actually have to reach that to win games. If you're able to simply hit his two item power spike, then the champion becomes far too reliable, even when not played optimally, which is exactly why NALCS teams prioritize him so much. Quick side note on this champion, he is completely imbalanced when paired with Yumi specifically and becomes so broken that he would randomly end up on other tier lists from other games. Last up, we got the Monkey King Wukong who will remain in S tier despite his nerfs because, well, let's face it, he currently has a 40% ban rate, 55% win rate, and an impressive 7% pick rate for a champion that's banned so much. This means that he will essentially have to drop like 4% win rate to get knocked out of S tier, and I, I don't know about you, but I do not see that happening as he hasn't even been fully researched as a champion yet. There are still so many variations of Wukong being tested, with a lot of them still working because his power level is just simply far beyond Saiyan level, but an interesting alternative to the current playstyle that you see on screen is actually his Q max with Fort in the Black Cleaver setup, which would be less impacted by these nerfs. So yeah, Sun Wukong's still gonna be a fantastic top laner. In the jungle, our starting S tier roster will be Master Easy, Amumu, Zack, Warwick, and Echo. For the changes to the list, we are gonna move Wukong down from S tier due to his nerfs impacting his jungle much more than his top lane. Trundle is also gonna fall from S tier to A tier due to the increase in Borg Bruisers dissuading people from going tanks. Not to mention his player has been dropping lately, but he will land in A plus tier. Coincidentally, not something I ever saw in my report card, because I was great in percentiles, people, come on. Anyway, we got the farm into click our champions Nocturne and Vi, who normally do well in and Loilo are doing much worse because everyone's just slightly tankier and they don't get as many free picks. 
Silas and Kindred are off to the Shadow Realm as they are pretty trash in low elo with 47% win rates right now. With Win Zhao, thanks to his buffs, will just barely be able to make it to B tier along with potentially making some use out of the new phase rush buffs. Kha'Zix is going to move from B tier to A tier on this patch as surprise surprise due to his new Bruiser Conqueror setup overperforming. It's just a little funny to me though because Kha'Zix is one of the most main champions in the game and the entire champion's theme is about evolving and adapting and yet so many Kha'Zix players just refuse to accept that this new player playstyle is, you know, maybe a little bit better, and simply put stat-wise, it is better, but not by much, only 1% in low elo. The reason why it's getting popularity though, and the reason why we are condoning it over his regular electrocute assassin build is that, well, there's just less targets to one-shot in this meta, as most team comps have at least three people you can't one rotation. That means that the extended DPS and dueling power of the Conqueror setup is much more valuable, and when you evolve Q into W, that W evolve is just way too OP at kiting all of these bruiser and juggernaut abusers, so give it a shot. Okay, hear me out on this one. Ivern is gonna move from off the list because, you know, he was both underplayed and has a 51% win rate, which is super uncommon for him, wait for it, to A tier. Which I will admit is a bold prediction, Cotton, but the buffs he receives are pretty huge for his early game. You're gonna have Daisy out a lot more often, making him pretty much a real champion because he's really useless without her, and that 30 base damage increase on an ability he spams that is AoE is big for his skirmish game. Will this make him high A tier though? Of course not. Will it make him A minus or B plus? Definitely. But in a meta where there's a lot of engaged champions or front lines for him to buff up with shields, I can only imagine the horror of just like, I know I mentioned this before, but Yumi Aatrox with an Ivor jungle, I, I just, it will never die. And then you still got juggernauts like Darius, Nasus, Mordekaiser being given an extra shield and mobility from the Ivern Q. Theoretically with his early game buffed, he will be suited for this meta or at minimum he's going to be viable again. Alas, for the highlights of the jungle, we got Zac, who can be considered the premier tank jungler right now. Not only is he S tier on the loyal list, but he is A plus on the high low one, making him the strongest tank suggestion on 10.7. And he's incredibly easy to pick up, and it only takes a couple of games to get used to abusing his slingshot gank range. Outside of the more well-known reasons for his power, you know, the center hulk buffs, improving his clear speed, the absurd gank range, the clear copyright infringement to Majin Buu with his pink skin giving him extra power level, but one of the most undervalued reasons as to why he's doing well in an early game skirmish meta was the buffs to his blob healing on 9.19. This buff actually allows him to survive a lot easier in mid game fights before a lot of healing reduction is even coming into play, meaning if you can get to level 11 early on Zac, you're just not gonna die and you can engage whenever you like like a complete Complete degenerate without any repercussions. For the mid lane S tier roster, we've got Diana, Fizz, Vigar, Echo, and Katarina. That means that our mid lane changes will include Wukong going from A tier to B tier due to his nerfs, Nocturne being specifically targeted by Riot for a nerf in mid lane, so he moves from A tier to B tier. Hoping Diana gets the same treatment soon, but probably not. Garen also targeted to specifically get nerfed in the mid lane, drops from A tier to B tier. We remove Zillion from the mid lane list due to his absurdly low play rate, and he's way more of a support champion now. Lissandra still sucks outside of a very specific amount of matchups, so off to the Shell Realm with her, but you know who doesn't suck? Vagar. Vigar? Vigar? Still haven't heard back from Riot support about my ticket asking how he's officially supposed to be pronounced, but we'll be moving him from A tier to S tier as this patch is getting, you know, a little spicy with predictions, I know. After the buffs he received last patch, he sits at a comfortable 52% win rate in gold, which is normally not our market for S tier, but he's gonna go to around 53% below that at silver, bronze, and iron, making him one of the best picks to actually climb into gold with for the mid lane, so for that reason, we decided to make an exception for him as, you know, this is the loyal list. The reason that the champion's doing better outside of, you know, actually being able to last it easier thanks to that buff is that in this meta, it's filled with a lot of low range champions who get caught in this cage like the monkeys that they are. And even though it's a bit fast paced for someone who's known for stacking and being an AFK farming champion, he actually gets his passive stacked up pretty quickly due to all the constant fighting, so I highly recommend you pick him up even if it's just as a counter pick as, I know, he still suffers a little bit versus assassins like Zed or Kassadin, uh, but he does smash Yasuo at the very least, so worth it. Syndra is quite possibly the most popular and strongest high elo solo queue mage, and might even be the strongest mage in competitive, and will be moving from B tier to A tier on the loyal list. Well, this is a bit of a surprise as despite her notion of being a no skill press R champion, she typically doesn't do well in this bracket as she loses to many popular assassins like Diana, Fizz, Katarina, Echo, and Cassidin, and for the most part, they're easier to execute than she is. Well, maybe not Katarina, but she doesn't have any skill shots unlike Syndra. 
Despite that, she's still doing pretty well, and it shows how overwhelmingly powerful her laning phase truly is right now, as she can bully out most matchups when played properly, and is one of the only proactive control mages who don't just kind of sit there and lane and farm and hope that they actually get to team fight and then win. She can do things like win lane and actually roam. Quick tip for beating assassin players on her, or really just winning any single 1v1, is doing what I like to call the no skill combo. All you need to do is hit Q, landing it is optional, and then you're gonna R, wait for some orbs to get out, and then E, then you can ignite W and Q again. I call it the no skill combo because you really can't miss stun when you combo that way, and then everything else lands pretty easily afterwards, so you make the easy outplay. Last up, my go-to counter pick and longtime partner on the Rift, Castle Win is gonna be an amazing pick up to your champion pool on this patch. Garen, Wukong, Nocturne, Talon, all of these AD anti-assassin picks just got nerfed while champions like Katarina, Diana, Echo, Vagar, Syndra are popular and best of all, Silas is coming back into the meta with a massive play rate who is just such a free matchup for Kassadin. Kassa Adin, kinda sounds like a Protoss here MSA like that, is always at the mercy of how good his matchups are, and right now they're simply amazing, which gives him the ability to use his more greedy build of Seraphs in the Lich Bane with Electric Q, which is the highest win rate setup in low elo, as it allows you to just simply one-shot people a lot easier. Moving down to the bot lane, our S tier roster is Jinx, Misfortune, Jin, Caitlyn, Vagar, and Vayne. First up for the changes, no we are not trolling, it's Vagar bot lane to S tier. So, fun fact, outside of Misfortune, who is pretty much a caster, mage bot laners in general perform significantly better than their marksman counterparts in low elo, but why is that? What it comes down to is mages, despite not scaling as reliably as marksmen, have more agency in the early to mid game. Even if their support is underperforming in AFK, they can still farm easily, still impact dragon fights, and maybe still get a kill once they hit 6. And outside of that, when it comes to team fighting, even if you get fed on a marksman, even in high low solo queue, it's hard for people to understand the concept of, you know, like peeling for a carry, and marksmen have a really hard time surviving on their own, especially because of this in low elo. Mages, on the other hand, normally have some kind of CC to peel for themselves, along with the almighty hourglass of Zhonya's, likely the best item in the game to help them survive. Because of this, despite his only 1% pick rate, Vagar's insane 54% win rate justifies him as an S tier pick currently. For similar reasons, we will be moving Ziggs from B tier to A tier as a bot laner because we decided to put a little bit more value on the power of bot lane mages in low elo. Thing about Ziggs is, it's similar to Ezreal, he can just farm on his own even if the support doesn't really do much, or if they went to go roam, you know, sometimes they do that. But in my opinion, he does better in bot lane because he doesn't actually have to deal with Assassin. Normally a Ziggs is kinda just gonna get smashed in lane by the highly mobile assassin roster, but in bot lane he will be safe to scale and can easily land skill shots after his support engages for him, giving him the ability to hit the mid game as a strong artillery mage who didn't actually feed the enemy Diana and was forced to FF before he could actually hit two items. He will instead be able to actually poke people out at a dragon fight or during a siege while spamming that annoying laugh. Last up, since this is the bot lane section and bot lane mains are super stubborn about only playing the marksman class despite every other role in the game being more than one champion class, but anyways, we will be moving Kaisa from B tier to A tier. The buffs that she received to her E are gonna help her out a little bit in terms of DPS during the mid to late game, but when you combine that with her new Halo Blade setup, she is gonna be a really solid and versatile champion. The cool thing about this new setup is not only does it make you stronger in the early game and give you pretty powerful dueling tools, but it has the flexibility to either go AD or AP after the first two items, meaning when your Shivana decides to go AD despite having Yasuo mid and Riven top, then you can actually save your team comp by going AP, and save yourself the hell of having to auto attack a full armor Malphite. Last up on our support S tier roster, we've got Blitzcrank, Leona, Sona, Bran, Nami, and Swain. For the changes to the support list, first up we've got Bran moving to S tier. So, very similar to what's happening in the AD carrier role, someone's gotta carry out a bot lane, and with Marksman being pretty terrible in low elo right now, why not mage supports? Fair warning though, Brand is probably the strongest carry support to reach gold with, as he's capable of 1v2 winning a laning phase and then ending the game with the most damage on either team. The reason I'm saying fair warning is his win rate drops once you hit plat, and then if you pick him in high diamond or master tier blind, it's considered trolling and people are gonna dodge you. The reason they're gonna do that is, another fun fact, Brand's support has the highest average deaths out of any champion in the game, and yes, that includes Yasuo, with Brand actually averaging around 10 deaths per game, making him the true 10 death power spike champion, as despite that, he's gonna hold a 53-54% to win rate in gold and below. My boy Swain is another powerful mage support who will be moving from A tier to S tier this patch. Similar to Brand, he is one of the kings of support when it comes to actually hitting gold, but his win rate drops when you hit plat and then majorly dips in diamond as well. Actually, he's really similar to Brand because he used to be a mid laner and now he's almost only played as a support. 
but instead of going 0-10 and carrying, he's gonna go 10-0 and carry because when this pick snowballs, he is pretty unkillable as it's super common to run into four melee comps right now and Swain just murders those. And one of the primary reasons why mage supports are doing so well in low elo right now is their ability to bully lane incredibly hard, causing the enemy AD carry to rage and no joke, it's a real thing. One more thing I would like to point out about this setup is it's most common to max Q and then E, but the QW max is trending in popularity and appears to be stronger stat wise so give that a shot. That means that our last highlight will be for Vel'Koz support who moves from B tier to A tier this patch. I feel like I repeat this a lot, but mostly because it just ends up being true. With the massive amount of melee champions, AoE mages, if they don't get snowballed on during the laning phase, they just obliterate dragon fights, which is one of the primary win conditions in the current way the game is played. Velkaz, unlike the other two guys I just mentioned, is actually still good in high elo, and it's not so much of a coincidence that he's harder to execute than them because they're super simple, but he also has the added advantage of still being popular as a mid laner and not being banished to only being a support like the other ones. So if you're looking for a harder to master mage support that you can still main until you're high low, I'd recommend Vel'Koz, but if you're looking for that easy ticket to gold, Brand and Swain are much better, and then you can look to transition to the cause. Thank you for watching our tier list video, and be sure to check out our other content on this channel, as well as at mobilex.gg. As always, I'm Adam Moriarty Isles, and may the new and old solo queue gods be with you.